Hello, hello. So I'm live on Instagram right now, but this video will be put out to all of my other platforms. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about detoxing from the matrix. So uh, the last few days I've been doing a serious detoxing program. It's 11 days. Like out of the 11 days, there's four days where I will not be eating any food. I will just be drinking clear liquid. And those last, the last two days, so I did it Friday and Thursday. And a lot was coming through, a lot was clearing out. So I just wanted to share some of the information that I received while I was in that process. Um, first of all, I love food. It's, you know, it's really hard for me to not eat and do fasting and things like that. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the first day I feel like was worse than the second day. I've never done two days in a row. I've done only one day. So, um, and I haven't done it in a long time. I felt that the second day was actually easier because my body was used to it and my body was kind of prepared for it. And I think I have to do it again next Tuesday and Wednesday. So, so much about my healing process has been coming up and the things that I need to work on. And also too, I kept getting a lot about the, how the matrix is detoxing. And we're seeing, obviously we're seeing a lot more beyond the veil and I feel like a lot of people don't want to admit it and that goes along with the detoxing processes. Sometimes when you're doing it, you'll hold back, you don't want to release, you don't want to admit certain things, uh, you don't want to let go of certain things. And one of the things that com kept coming in for me to talk about in this video, because as we go on my program down the rabbit hole, we're gonna talk about this. And part of the activation, we are going to release idolization. So uh, I posted a post on my private page about Lady Gaga yesterday, and I guess it was a picture from American Horror Story, and it was her in the middle as a vampire, and then like three or four little kids on the sides of her drinking blood. and. There were some people commenting under the video, oh, that's from American Horror Story. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but it doesn't mean that it's not connected to anything that's in this reality. And that is something that the Matrix always does is it trickles in the truth and makes you believe that it's either a myth or a lie so that you don't connect with what it really is and then you can't work through it, you can't move through it. And I feel like a lot of people are going to have a hard time with letting go of their idols. I know a lot of people love Lady Gaga. I could see why people like Lady Gaga. I feel like she's uh, very eccentric. She's you know a talented artist, her music is good. I've never liked her though. I've always, I've always couldn't stand her. I think one of the things was too, when I was doing music, I had blonde hair and people always used to tell me you look like Lady Gaga. And I always used to get really, really mad because I just couldn't stand her. Um, I was never a huge fan of like really popular, like pop artists or any of these, cause I knew, I always knew that there was like a soul selling process in the part of, um, you know, being famous. So I was, I always like couldn't stand people. I always listened to like underground music. I never watched a lot of movies. That's why I loved pro wrestling when I was a kid because I felt you didn't need to like sell your soul to be a wrestler. Like a lot of them were more normal people, even when as their characters, like I grew up watching like when Stone Cold was around in The Rock and I don't know about The Rock. I really hope he's not a baby eater, but you know. Um, it's an extension of their personality when they're a wrestler. Like that's every great wrestler. It's always just an extension of their personality. It's not a gimmick. It's who they really are, but it's turned up all the way. And I feel like that's why I loved wrestling because I feel like that's who we should be when we present ourselves to the world and whatever we're doing with our artwork or coaching or healing, you know, we should always just turn up the notch a little bit or just keep turning it up, you know, like why do we turn the volume down? And I feel like a lot of times we turn the volume down because we're so focused on other people and what they're doing. And the idolization process is so toxic to humanity because we look up to people and we look up to them and we put them on these imaginary pedestals that we feel that we'll never reach. And to me, that's the biggest little bullshit because a lot of times when you're connected to somebody, you see a piece of them in yourself. 
So Stone Cold Steve Austin was always one of my favorite wrestlers. And that whole fuck you, Stone Cold Stunner, like all of that stuff, like fuck the corporations, fuck, like that was me. Like I could see a piece of myself in Stone Cold Steve Austin. So that's the thing. It's like, it's really cool to have people that you look up to, people that inspire you. But when they start to become your idols and when you look at them, like a lot of people look at Lady Gaga as somebody who they put on this pedestal and that you can never reach, that's when it becomes a problem. And that is one of the reasons why I always say the guru is dead. The guru is dead. Because I really believe that we are all capable of being as powerful as each other. Some of us are better at some things than other people, you know? Um, I'm really great at energy work. I'm really great at working in the galactic realm as far as certain things like, you know, I guess, I don't know, I would say something like nutrition, which is kind of like in my field or like yoga, I'm terrible at. I'm not good at those things. Like those are things that I'm like, I need other people to help me with or I need programs to help me with. Like with the whole nutrition thing right now, I'm on a program. I don't want to, I mean, it's not that I, I know a lot about nutrition, but I don't, it's not something like I feel super passionate about. So it's just like one of those things where we, I feel like the matrix is detoxing the idolization, in, the energy of idolization in the world. Like we need to release this energy. We need to let go of idols. We need to stop expecting other people in this reality to do the things that we really want to do, you know? and or to make the changes that we want to see we are the only ones that are going to be able to make those changes so when and and i i could feel it when i posted about lady gaga because i was kind of attitudey about it like fuck her she's a fake asshole i always knew it blah 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 people were like well that's from american horror story but it's really not though because i've been saying for years and i've even been telling my friends this if you watch some of my old videos i've been saying this that american horror story whoever the creators and writers of that are definitely involved in the satanic cult sacrificing drinking baby blood all of that i remember one time i went to my friend's house and she was watching it and it was awful awful energy it was terrible it was like and, and like I could just feel it. I know that energy and this is why I'm doing down the rabbit hole because I want you to know that energy. It's in shows, it's in people, it's even in certain areas on the planet like geographic locations. You should be able to as an intuitive person just know when that energy is around. Why? Because you want to protect yourself, you want to protect your family, you want to protect your friends. That energy isn't going anywhere. But the more that we learn and decipher that really, I hate the word demonic, but dark, dark energy that is very manipulative and makes humans fall into, it's, I, I don't understand what it is with American Horror Story that people love. I, I guess it's because it may be like an adrenaline rush, the stories are really good, but the energy of it is so dark. I even feel like the way they film the show is very very dark it's very um it's morbid and depressing and it's also one of those things too where these people know when i'm talking about these people that are in these cults they know that in our society especially western culture we have no connection with death like we don't understand the death process the grieving process the afterlife process like our Western society is in the dark about a lot of that. That's why we're having a spiritual awakening. So what they do in these movies and these TV programs is they make death salacious. They make it something that is, um, uh, what is that word? Kind of, uh, give me the word, give me the word because I can't think of it right now. But they make it into something that is, it's almost like not real. You know what I mean? Like people think that when they watch things like American Horror Story that it's not real. People also think when they, it's it's kind of like a morbid fantasy, I guess, in a way for, because humans are tangible. No, I don't feel like that's the word. Um, God, I don't know. But anyways, you're, you're feeling the energy that I'm trying to say here. Um, 
they make it so you don't, you'll never understand or want to look into the process of death. It's always going to be something that is like, and it's not always going to be something because we're changing the energy here, but it's always going to be, I don't want to say that, it's, they make it into something that is unreachable to humans to understand. Like we'll never understand death. We'll never be able to grasp the grieving process. We'll never be able to heal from that. So they make it something that is more fantasy based or story based or um, anything like that. So we can't connect with the process. There's nothing wrong with connecting with death. Like death is a normal part of being a human. As a human, we know it's a given one day we are going to die. But in the process of making these movies and making these TV shows, they make it into something where it's more of, it's not a piece of our reality and they bring you into this morbid energy while you're emotionally and mentally not in a good place and it, it lowers your frequency, it lowers your vibration. We should be thinking of death as from a higher point of view. We should be thinking of death from a higher vibration. We should be appreciating death. We should be loving death. We should be learning more about death. I'm not saying going out and killing people and be like, yeah, I love death. It's like, no, just being more appreciative to the process because when you appreciate death, you appreciate your life more. You wanna live your life more. You wanna give more to you, yourself. You wanna be inspiring to the people around you because you know the time on this planet is limited. And it's almost in, like in a lot of these TV shows, they make it as is death is like nothing. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing. And I feel like these are things that we need to learn more about and understand more. But back to detoxing from the matrix is that, you know, we are, we need to learn about what has been hidden from us in order for us to excel, in order for us to succeed, in order for us to really get to those higher frequencies in order for us to evolve as humans. So humans are conditioned to idolize other people because it distracts them from who they are. When you constantly look up to somebody, when you envy somebody, when you're in the frequency of jealousy, I feel like envy can be good if you flip it, but when you fall into jealousy, jealousy brings a lot of hatred, hatred jealousy can bring sickness then you're not focusing on you. You're focusing on them and that person and what they have and what you don't have and then you're actually draining yourself. You're allowing that person that you're envious of, that you idolize, you're allowing that person to take energy from you and they may not even be meaning to do it, but that's what happens. So part of the process of detoxing from the matrix is breaking these old codes of idolization and letting go of like, first of all, humans are humans and they do fucked up shit. So when somebody that you love, and I'm saying on a level of like, you can't always put people on a pedestal because when they end up disappointing you, then you're gonna end up falling back on the things that you're passionate about because that person is normally connected to the things that you're passionate about. Or when somebody that you idolize does something that's really like morally wrong you want to make excuses for them and that is what we need to not be available for right now like we need to start holding people accountable I don't give a fuck what they do I don't care if they're the greatest singer in the world if you love everything and all their speeches that they say whatever politician that they are uh, if they're doing devious things like trafficking children and you know, destroying other people's lives and murdering people, then we need to start holding them accountable. You can't just ignore the obvious anymore. So this is this is some of the stuff that we are going to be going in for the program down the rabbit hole. There are only four spots left for the pre-sale. Uh, the pre-sale is right now priced at $333 and it is going to go up to $555. So only four spots left for that. So I would definitely get your tickets soon. Um, reserve your space. We're going to be going in. So I'm going to be doing like full on hour, hour and a half videos about each topic that. So we're going to talk about the Matrix. We're going to talk about the Dark Magicians of Atlantis. We are going to talk about our DNA, the crystalline DNA, the potential that we have as humans. 
Then we are going to talk about the ET agenda. And there was one other thing that I completely forgot about. I don't have my paper with me, but I'll be writing about it more soon. So there is going to be five videos. So five weeks of videos, five weeks of activations, and then journaling prompts. And we're going to do two group coaching call all the Luciferians. <laughs> that was the other video. That's going to be before the ET agenda. So I'm going to talk a lot about the satanic sacrificing, how that works, how that actually connects to... My phone should be on Do Not Disturb. And um, we're going to go into that. And we are going to, I want you to understand this energy. I want you to know when it's around. I want you to be able to see it. I want you to be able to feel it. I want you to be able to understand it so you can protect yourself against it. And when it is around, you can bring the light in. All right. If you have any questions or anything, come uh, connect with me in a private DM and I'll see you all soon. Bye.